everybody, and today Game Informer put out another article about the Taken King, and this one is packed with a lot of information. I was wanting to cover everything, and usually I do a video where I talk about what's been covered, and then I give my opinion on it and explain a little bit further, but because there is so much in this article, for this video, I'm just gonna talk about the facts as to what has actually been revealed to us. I might do another video where I talk about my opinions of what we've seen so far, but for this video, we're just gonna be talking about the facts of the things that kind of stood out for me within this article. I will leave a link in the description for the full article, it's like five pages long, for you guys to actually read through and see everything in there. But like I said, this is a video highlighting what I thought to find the most interesting parts of that article. So first, let's start out by talking more about light level, because as we know, we will be going from level 34 to level 40, and that's gonna just be our level just a straight up level, but there is still going to be a light level. So what the article says is like with leveling, it offers a consistent and clear path to improvement. And it also gives Bungie a clear way to tell people what activities they should tackle. Every mission, strike, and raid now has a recommended light total as a guidepost for when you're ready for it. And then it says, do you like the idea that light level comes from both weapons and armor? So basically what is happening now with the Taken King is you have your level 40, but you're also going to have a light level that is beneath the level 40. So your light level is not with your level, it's in a total separate thing. And your light level, or should I say light total, is going to consist of not only your armor level, but also the weapons that you're using and the ghost shell that you're using. So you're constantly going to want to be upgrading your armor to get that better stuff. There's going to be situations where a green is going to be better than what you have right now there's gonna be blues that are better than purples so that's what it's gonna be there's gonna be this total light level and the way that you upgrade it is by with better weapons better armor better ghost shells and better class items the next thing that they talked about was to do with discipline intellect and strength because as of right now in destiny we're told that we have hundred percent discipline and we know that that's a lot we know that we're gonna have our intellect, our discipline, our strength is going to be coming back faster, but we don't know exactly how faster. What they're going to be doing in the Taken King is they are going to be telling you in seconds how long it takes for you to recharge stuff. So this is really, really, really good. You don't have to just guess as to how long it takes to recharge stuff. You're going to know straight away my intellect is at whatever number. It takes me four minutes to get my super. It takes me 40 seconds to get my grenade back. So that's really good we actually have a much clearer and more understandable way of telling how long it takes for us to get our cooldowns off. Moving on to character customization in The Taken King, we're gonna all be beautiful individual snowflakes. First, let's talk about ghost shells. So there's gonna be a bunch of new ghost shells in The Taken King, which is awesome. And not only are they going to look different, it's not just an aesthetic thing. They also give you stats the same as your armor does with intellect, discipline, and strength. And they also offer little bonuses. When I was at E3, I saw a bonus that you get XP for Vanguard, faster, you get XP from Crucible faster, and it also seems like you're going to have a perk where you can sense nearby spin metal and other resources, so that's really cool. So when you're in the wild looking for resources, using a shell that has the stat for the resource you're looking for is gonna make farming that a little bit easier. There also seems to be one where you get extra glimmer for killing certain enemies, so that's really good. If you're farming, the shells are gonna come in very handy. So I like that a lot. Shells are actually being used for something than just opening doors. It's great. They then went on in the article to say that it seems as if Bungie is looking for increased ways to let you look and move the way you want. Since now you can declare faction allegiance and get a faction badge, there's no longer a need to put on a class item you don't want. And he said that he's really looking forward to wearing the hunter cloak he likes rather than the one I need for dead orbit reputation. I totally understand that. I think it hits hunters probably the hardest, 
because I want to wear the sexy, awesome capes that are in this game, and I can't because I need Dead Orbit rep. That's not going to be an issue anymore. You can go to whichever faction you want to pledge allegiance to. You get their badge, and until you go and cancel the allegiance or change your allegiance, you will be getting all of your faction going towards that specific allegiance. You don't need to wear a class item. You don't need to wear a shader. You don't need to wear an emblem. They also said that the character screen now has a slot for equippable emotes right below the emblem section. So that's really cool. We're going to be getting new emotes that we can select. We can unlock them maybe through the game or whatever it may be, but we get to get different emotes so we can choose how we want to communicate with other people in Destiny. And it says that the game even lets you cycle through whether you show off your primary, secondary, or heavy weapon when you're walking through social spaces. So I'm liking that as well. It's, it's just all about self-expression, all about customizing your character to be who you want to be and not who you have to be based on what you're trying to achieve in the game. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the tower, changes that are coming to the tower, and vendors that are in the tower. So in this article, they talked about Banshee, which is the gunsmith, and it says not only does Banshee now play host to the sleeper simulant quest, he also has all that cool new weapon testing and arms day stuff going on. He now has his own reputation, which you primarily gain by completing weapon tests in the field. These are basically an additional set of bounties you can tackle, but you have to use a particular gun that he gives you. Once you hit a certain reputation tier, you can order arms day weapons. These are special legendary weapons from one of the foundries, and you put in the order and wait for the day to pick up your new toy. It's basically just one more weekly event to look forward to, much in the same way that Xur's arrival on the weekend is so much fun. So that's really Really cool you get to get a rep with the gunsmith and you get to be like hey gunsmith we're kind of buddies now i would like to order that new hawk Hake weapon. It's not how you say it. That new Suros weapon. And then eventually he will have it ready for you, much like you had to wait for Varix to have your exotic weapon ready for you. And then you can go and pick it up and be happy with your new awesome weapon. Now we're just going to talk about currency a little bit because that is to do with the tower and that is to do with vendors because you need currency in order to buy your stuff. So what they're doing is making things a little bit more streamlined. Vanguard marks and crucible marks have been replaced by legendary marks as the main way to purchase legendary gear, which is simple simple and a very reasonable change. Similarly, an item called Armor Materials replaces the three class specific items such as Hadronic Essence, Plasteel Plating, etc. So it's far easier to earn materials on one character and then use them to upgrade a different character. The Vanguard Quartermaster offered me an option for trading in my Plasteel Plating for Armor Materials. So the transition is going to be pretty painless. If you have Armor Materials, you can just go and just transfer it for whatever you want. You got plasto plating you can get armor materials it's not going to be a, a painful process and lastly when they were talking about vendors they mentioned a brand new item in Zer's inventory he now has an item called the three of coins which you could buy to boost your chance of an exotic engram dropping on the next boss you fight so that's really cool if you have a bunch of strange coins you can buy this thing from Zer that makes you more likely to get exotic drops that's great we hardly even like got exotic drops from stuff right right like we didn't just go and fight a boss and we get an exotic that never happened so that's really good you get to increase your chances of getting an exotic drop and if you have a bunch of strange coins you're gonna have a happy happy fun time now moving on to strikes one of the big focuses is that they want them to be replayable and not just because you're grinding at any given stage of the strike we were told that bungie has set up two or even three different encounters that could show up maybe it's a fight against the cabal one time and a fight against the taken the next time ammo spawns and even stationary turrets show up at new and different places they've even recorded multiple versions of the dialogue so that on subsequent runs at any given strike, you might get a new little information tidbits of lore. So that, that's adding different things. It's, it's random. You're going to go into a strike that you've played before and you're going to be like, this is totally different. There's ammo spawning in different places. There's a turret shooting me where there wasn't shooting me before. And not only that, but they have recorded different types of dialogue. So you're going to get to find out more about the story of Destiny, which we need. 
We need more backstory because I have no clue what I'm doing in Destiny. I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. I need more backstory, so that's really good. Now, when it comes to designing the new strikes, in the Game Informer article, they said that it seems that Bungie has recognized how much people liked the raid boss fights, and they've gone for a middle ground. The bosses are less bullet spongy, yippee, than in many of the original game strikes, but they often require some raid type mechanics in order to defeat. So that's really good. Instead of just having a boss where you just shoot it forever, you're now going to be challenged by the fact that it has mechanics to you. You have to think about it. You have to think about what do I have to do in order to kill this guy because there's going to be raid-like mechanics. So that's really good. That actually makes strikes fun, which is what we want. They then went on to talk about the strike playlist changes, saying that players will no longer dive into a strike playlist based on their character's level. Instead, strike playlists are broken into three categories. You have the Vanguard Legacy Strike Playlist, which is basically a list of all the strikes from Vanilla Destiny and the last two rounds of DLC. Vanguard Ursa is a list of random heroic strikes that will award players with legendary marks and legendary engrams. And finally, you have the Vanguard Marmoset, which is an interesting name. It's a list of strikes pulled specifically from the Taken King. They go on to say that this seems like a simpler matchmaking system for strikes and should give players a better way to dive into the content they want to play. The last thing that they wanted to talk about with strikes was of course the Nightfall and they said that they have found out that Bungie are going to be hand-picking modifiers for the weekly Nightfall, which is really good. Everything so far has just been completely random, so it's gonna be very nice to have a designer actually sitting down and thinking about the modifiers that are going to make the experience more challenging, more fun, or whatever. So that's really good. I like this. Less, less random is good. We want things to be specifically designed to make the experience as good as it can possibly be. And lastly, we're gonna be talking about The Crucible. There's a brand new game mode called Zone Control, which we didn't get to play at E3. I haven't actually seen it, like I haven't had experience with it. So I'm really excited to get my hands on this. The way that they go on to explain Zone Control is that your personal kills don't even matter. So you feel like you're helping your team lock down a location just by standing there. So it sounds like it's very similar to Salvage, but a little bit different. So that's really interesting. I like anything that is objective based I just I just do I just like those kind of modes I'm not really a TDM fan or anything like that so I'm looking forward to seeing how zone control plays when the Taken King actually comes out and last 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 of all they talked about bounties in the crucible they said there's more story progression involved in participating through interactions with characters like Shax and the faction leaders. Mechanically, the quests seem oriented towards teaching solid Crucible tactics to players, which is good for everyone who plays in the Crucible. So that's really good. It sounds like we're not just gonna have a robot that gives us bounties, but Shax is gonna have actual quests for us, like quest lines for us to complete in the Crucible. On top of that, they said that there are a ton of new bounties that are dedicated for each class you play each day. Fire team bounties, so completing them with your friends actually gets you to complete the bounty. Featured playlist bounties, Trials of Osiris bounties, and even weekly bounties that come with big rewards. So I am extremely excited about this because now there's so much more to do in PvP. Usually it was like, you finish the daily PvP bounties and what more do you do? That's pretty much it, right? You have the daily mission thing, daily crucible type, you have the bounties and that's it. Whereas this, this, we have quest lines, we have a butt ton of bounties, and we also have weekly bounties. So I am, I'm excited, I'm excited. I just wanna play the Taken King. I don't even wanna play Destiny anymore. I just wanna play the Taken King, I'm done. I just wanna play, I just wanna play the Taken King. So that is all that I'm gonna be covering in this video, guys. It was a long one, so thank you for sticking with me. Like I said, if you do want to read the whole article to get all of the information, it will be in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you're most excited for out of hearing this from Game Informer what are you most excited for okay guys I'll speak to you awesome and amazing people later bye